the environment that they were trying to establish. And then as I left, that was the tone that I had set for others. And uh, talking to some of these NFL teams and hearing how their practices go, I feel that you know I'm prepared well enough to be able to go out there and, and fit right in with what they got going on. Hey, Mr. Coleman, which teams have talked to you? Uh, I've talked to I've talked to the Colts. I've talked to the Giants. I've talked to the Bills, the Cowboys, the Rams. Um, there's a couple more. I'm trying to think of. I'm sorry. Yeah, you got to get some blur. I can understand. Play. Yeah. Hey, what's your favorite move, by the way? As a defensive out in out. Coming off the ball, setting up inside, coming back outside, dip my shoulder off the edge when the lineman shoots his hands, bend, lean, go make a play. So your cone drill must be insanely good then. I would hope so. You want to find out, right? Yes, sir. Who's the toughest offensive lineman you've faced? Uh, I'll probably go with Makai Beckton. Yeah. Why is that? What did he do? Uh... He's extremely athletic, extremely powerful. He knows his body well. He knows his length. And um, specifically with the team that he was that he played for, um, he fit their scheme very well. Mr. Coleman, what separates you from the rest of the defensive linemen here at this combine? My intangibles. I'll provide more than a stat line. Just to go back to the Cowboys, was that a formal or an informal meeting? All of my interviews to this point have been informal. Thank you. Some of the Penn State guys have said how Beaver Stadium is going to help them get into the NFL because it's you know, 110,000 people. Do you think the Carrier Dome, with how iconic that is, is that kind of a similar similar place as well to help you get ready for you know these big stadiums in the NFL? Yeah, no doubt. Um, you know, the Carrier Dome, it's, it's, it's an awesome environment. It's a crazy atmosphere. Uh, it gets ridiculously hot in there, even though the Carrier <laughs> is an air conditioning company. There's no air conditioning company. A lot of people, right, it's funny, right? A lot of people don't know that. I didn't know that before I went there. And so I showed up for that first time, like, practice, and we were like, doing a walkthrough, and I'm in there, like, sweats trickling, and I'm like, it's just a walkthrough. But, um, no. Uh, you know you just killed Carrier's stock, right? <laughs> they're putting an air conditioner in there. Like, you know, it will be in there soon. It's just not there right now, but it's coming. It's on the way. Of course, uh, when you leave, right? Right, right. But uh, it actually plays to our advantage, though, and that's, that was one thing that I actually I, I got had to get comfortable with, but I liked while I was there, is that with how, um, how intense the heat got while we were there, that's something that you can't replicate in practice, especially when you assume you're going to Syracuse, New York, you're about to go play in the cold. Nobody's expecting that they're going to catch heat cramps, you know? <laughs> so, that worked in our favor. That was all good. I loved it. Um, and then, you know, we got we, we get the crowd packed in there. It gets loud to the point on third down, you know, the coaches are like, are you guys communicating with each other? And we're like, I'm trying. <laughs> like, hearing me. like, I'm saying it as loud as I can. And that's, that's another thing that was just amazing, too, you know, um, having that crowd whether it was a big crowd or a, lot, or, or a small crowd, you know, the carrier dome was just so packed in on top of itself that having that crowd there making any kind of noise was too much noise, and it made it really tough for other offenses. So um, it was awesome. I think that that is going to be similar to playing in the NFL, and I think that that prepared me well. You know, I'm excited for that. Um, and it really just brought a – it shed a light on how important a fan base is to help and achieve, uh, achieve their goals. Is your down-to-earth mentality going to be helpful to any NFL team that drafts you? It could be helpful to every NFL team. <laughs> that's how I feel about it. Uh, yeah, no. Um, that's one thing that I always try to pride myself on. You know, don't sell myself short. Be confident in who I am and what I can do. But at the same time, understand that there's still more to go. There's still more room to grow. And, um, you know, being humble about it is never, it's never going to hurt anybody. It seems like your best pass rush move is flash those hands, get the tackle, flash his hands, and dip in the corner. At what point did you kind of learn how to use that to your advantage and uh, be able to get the upfield uh, shoulder on the guy? Yeah, so. Um, being at Syracuse, being a four-year starter, freshman, sophomore year, uh, were not quite pleasant, is how I described them. Um, so I had to figure out how, how am I going to adjust, how am I going to make something happen, because I'm not going to go four years of just uh, the same repetitive uh, habits, you know? That's, that's insanity, literally. And so uh, I went out there and I spent extra time on the field trying to figure out who I am and what it, what it is that my body does and what am I good at. And uh, part of what makes me who I am as a pass rusher and as a player is how analytical I am. I'll pay attention to everything. I'm always watching. I'm always learning. In-game adjustments are huge. And so being able to look at a guy and say, I did this move the first time, and it may have worked or it may not have worked, but that's what he knows so, so far. That's what he knows to this point. So that was a setup, being able to come back and rework that move in a similar situation and do a counter off of it. That's, 
that's what I'd like to say is who I am. So that's how I learned about that flash move and, um, and how to work it. And have you been called to go out, like drop back in a zone blitz scheme? Yeah. Yeah, many times. Uh, there's been a few times where I've dropped out to cover the flats. There's been a few times where, you know, we had man on the running back or man on the side end. And then there's been a couple of times over at Syracuse where we had a guy injured and uh, they just straight asked me to play middle uh, linebacker on third down. And call, was, wait, call the signals, right? Uh, I didn't have to, luckily, I didn't have to get out there and, you know, run the defense. The signals came in from the sideline. So we were all just kind of looking at the sideline and got the call all together. Um, especially with how fast tempo goes in the ACC, you don't really have time as a middle linebacker gets to get oh, right, set. Right, right. But um, you know, I had to go out there and sit in the middle of the field, protect the hashes, and close on the ball. Which would you prefer? I, I like to get after the passer. I'm a pass rusher. <laughs> so, Kendall, that kind of answers my question. I was going to ask you: It's third and eight versus fourth and one. Would you rather get a big sack or a big stop in the run game to get your defense off the field? All right. I mean, either one of those plays. Defense is going to get hyped right afterwards. We're going to get off the field as well. But, um, you know, getting a sack, there's there's not much like hitting a quarterback. <laughs> Your face on TV a little bit more as well. I don't even care about hitting my face. I just, like I said, there's not much like hitting a quarterback. All right. I'm all about that. You've been speaking about your advantage for the biggest thing you've learned from him and what has that experience been like so far the last couple months? Uh, man, it's quite literally been a dream come true. Um, when I was a little kid, I actually, like I said, I'm from here, hometown event for me. When I was a little kid, I went to one of Robert's camps that he had around the area. And uh, it's my first time like being away from home for an extended period of time. Like we stayed in the dorms at UND and uh, went over to that camp and running around doing whatever he had us doing, you know, like little kid stuff. And I ended up somehow came away with MVP of the camp. And so I was all excited. I ran up to the front of the camp on the last day. Robert Mathis, he's right there in front of us, and he gives me this little medal, puts it around my neck, and I get a football sign and jersey signed by him. I'm like, man, this is crazy. Like, Robert Mathis, my idol. And then in high school, I see Robert and Dwight on the uh, Sundays going out there and just spinning on everybody. And I'm like, man, I got to do that stuff. So Friday nights, I'm out there ripping and spinning, doing all this kinds of stuff. My coach is like, we don't teach that. Don't do that. And I'm like, they're doing it. Like, I want to be like them. Have you met Dwight Freeney? Uh, I met him once at Syracuse. Your thoughts about him? Um, he's a great guy, a great mole model to have. Yeah. But back to your question, uh, when I when I got out to Syracuse, ironically, I actually ended up meeting uh, meeting Robert again, but this time through my dentist. <laughs> my mom was talking to my dentist while I was at school, and my dentist was like, "Yeah," uh, while he's you know doing his thing. He's like, "Yeah, I heard Kendall's doing well out there. Syracuse playing defensive end." And she was like, "Yeah, he's doing well." He was like, oh, well, you know, my neighbor's Robert Mathis. If you want me to, uh, you want me to put him on? And she was like, yes. Like, how long have we been going to you? <laughs> like, like, what? And so, uh, you know, um, that's a good question. It's Keystone Dental Group. Yeah, that's the name of the company. Um, but, yeah, so then I got on with Robert Mathis like that. And then, like, working with him right now, it's been amazing. Uh, the one thing that he probably leans on and tells me the most is, you know, it's not about where you start. It's about how you finish. You know, and he takes pride on the idea of, um, you know, being here already. I got my foot in the door. I gave myself an opportunity. With him, it's not about getting into the league, but staying in the league. And uh, working with him and having him uh, in my corner and being my mentor, along with Dan Muir, um, those are guys that I'm beyond fortunate to have. And it's uh, really grateful. Dan were teammates with the Colts for a few years. Can you tell them they have that bond of having played together? What's their relationship like? Those two are clowns. <laughs> they go in there, they're in there joking around and stuff. All You can tell that they were teammates. They have fun with it. That's another thing that I really appreciate about those two is that, you know, there's a saying, you know, if you love what you do, you never work a day in your life. I've never seen them work. They love what they do. They are passionate about it, and they have fun with it, and that's what it's all about. What are you, you going to miss? Not, sorry. Like hitting, sorry about that. They oh, say okay. there's nothing like hitting a quarterback. Describe that feeling. What goes through your body? What goes through your mind? <laughs> uh, rage. <laughs> um, yeah, no. It's it's just an amazing feeling, you know. Like everybody on the football field is it's hype. They're hyper aware. They know where everybody is. They know what's going on, and for the most part, the quarterback is the only one that you have a chance of him just completely not knowing. He's got to be paying attention to something else. And so even if he catches you at the last second, generally they're not they're not about to get their body in position to be able to like deliver a blowback. You know, they're, they just got to kind of sit there and, and take the shot. And so um, that's, hey, a, that's a nice feeling so this, from this, my part. This begs a different question, but if you were a Marvel Avenger, who would you be? I think you kind of answered it. You said you think I kind of answered it? Yeah. If I could ask you, who did you think I answered with already? The Hulk. The Hulk? Yeah. 
Oh, wow, that's nice. I didn't think uh, I didn't think about that, but that's probably accurate now that you say it. And the way that I answered it, you know, my favorite my favorite uh, Avenger is Spider Man, but uh, bro, he's technically not an Avenger yet. I watch all those movies, so I'm like technical with it, but uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, he's technically not a video, but my favorite, my favorite of them is Spider-Man. But I could definitely see the whole, you know, growing up, my mom always said, uh, when she was explaining to other people, she's like, Kendall is the nicest kid you have ever met. But then he puts that helmet on and he becomes a completely different person, a kid I've never met before. The Hulk, yeah. see? So I guess, like you said, the Hulk is probably more fitting than Spider-Man. Yeah. <laughs> Any formal meeting with the Bills? I have not. I have not. I don't have any formal interviews scheduled right now with any team. Hmm. What will you miss most about Syracuse? Uh, my friends. Like I said earlier, my friends and my family and my rock. Uh, you know, I'm a big believer in, you know, home is where the heart is. So home isn't, it's not a, home isn't a place, it's a people. And so being able to be around my friends and get back over there for pro day is something I'm excited to do and excited, excited to see everybody and kind of, you know, go back and talk to my freshmen and see how they've grown and matured and stuff like that. See who's about to take up the reins now that we're out of there. God bless you. Thank you.